Firstly, many thanks to Ellen Lloyd over at AncientPages.com for her extensive research and writing on the conspiracy. Has a buried city within the Grand Canyon been covered up? The Hopi Indians have a traditional story told to them by their ancestors. It details the original pyramid builders living in an underworld in the Grand Canyon. Dissension arose between the good and the bad, the people of one heart and the people of two. Machetto, who was their chief, taught them how to leave the underworld. He caused a tree to grow up and pierce through the roof of the underworld, letting the people of one heart climb out. They settled by Passisvai, Red River, which is in Colorado, subsequently growing grain and corn. They then sent out a message to the Temple of the Sun, asking the blessing of peace, goodwill and rain for people of one heart, but their messenger never returned. Among the engravings of animals in the local caves is an image of a heart over the spot where it is said the entrance to be located. This legend was learned by W. E. Rollins during a year spent with the Hopi Indians. An article published in the Arizona Gazette reinforced this legend. Ever since the article appeared, there has been a lot of speculations whether an underground city actually exists. David Hatcher Childress, who examined the story, said, Perhaps the most amazing suppression of all is the excavation of an Egyptian tomb by the Smithsonian itself in Arizona. A lengthy front-page story of the Phoenix Gazette on April 5, 1909 gave a highly detailed report on the discovery and excavation led by a Professor S.A. Jordan of the Smithsonian. The World Explorers Club decided to check on this story by calling the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. Speaking to a Smithsonian staff archaeologist, they told her that they were investigating a story from a 1909 Phoenix newspaper article about the Smithsonian Institution's excavation of rock-cut vaults in the Grand Canyon where Egyptian artifacts had been discovered, and whether the Smithsonian Institute could give me any more information on the subject. Her reply was as follows. The first thing I can tell you, before we go any further, is that no Egyptian artifacts of any kind have ever been found in North or South America. Therefore, I can tell you that the Smithsonian Institute has never been involved in such excavations. While it cannot be discounted that the entire story is an elaborate newspaper hoax, the fact that it was on the front page, named the prestigious Smithsonian Institution, and gave a highly detailed story that went on for several pages lends a great deal to its credibility. It is hard to believe such a story could have come out of thin air. Is the idea that ancient Egyptians came to the Arizona area in the ancient past so objectionable and preposterous that it must be covered up? Perhaps the Smithsonian Institution is more interested in maintaining the status quo than rocking the boat with astonishing new discoveries that overturned previously accepted academic teachings. Historian and linguist Carl Hart, editor of World Explorer, then obtained a hiker's map of the Grand Canyon from a bookstore in Chicago. Pouring over the map, they were amazed to see that much of the area on the north side of the canyon has Egyptian names. The area around 94 Mile Creek and Trinity Creek had areas, rock formations apparently, with names like Tower of Set, Tower of Ra, Horus Temple, Osiris Temple, and Isis Temple. Could these legends actually be true? As always, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. While perusing the many perplexing sites we are yet to cover on our channel, we stumbled across something which could quite possibly be a massive clue, evidence left as to the method of construction of many ancient sites found all over Earth. Our channel has, for a long time, put forward the hypothesis that a highly advanced worldwide civilization once flourished here on our planet. We believe that many of the ancient sites which display unexplained architecture were left by this lost people, placed far within our distant past. And once one begins to investigate these ruins with this possibility in mind, you start to notice some compelling things regarding these amazing sites. For example, the metal clamps we have previously covered, often created using impressive mixes of alloys and somehow poured molten could now be seen as earlier architectural examples less than the mortarless, mysteriously notched stonework, also found in similar areas all over the world, with the more precise and thus more impressive stonework, seen as a later, more sophisticated method of construction. What's more, although virtually all ancient sites have been dated to the most convenient suspects within known taught history, 
There also exist the numerous caves and temples, hewn from the solid bedrocks, carved with such accuracy and vision, they elude recreation even by our modern-day technology. And while looking at an amazing rock-cut cave within the site of Mamalapuram, India, a site we are now convinced was left by this same civilization, a curious piece of evidence seemingly presented itself. Upon the roughly finished roof of this ancient cave is evidence left by the same technology used to not only cut the astonishingly huge Longyu Caves, but also the abandoned Langshan Quarry, both in China. This discovery, we believe, is only just the beginning of a realization that these telltale signatures are present at many other unexplained sites around the world. We have long stipulated that many of the ancient ruins claimed by our more modern-day ancestors are most likely not their actual creations. If the structure does date to this more recent age, they are usually found to be sitting upon the telltale remnants of a highly precise ancient foundation originally left by this elusive group. Who were these amazing people? When did they flourish here on Earth? What happened to them? Why did they never record how they created such wonders? Although it is easy for skeptics to argue that the caves and architecture were merely created through excruciating hard labor, any practical demonstration of this has eluded us for many centuries. Furthermore, many of the extensive cave excavations found all over the world, presumably dating back to this bygone age, are all absent any waste as if the machine tasked with creating these underground labyrinths turned stone to dust. And although the technology and or possible machinery tasked with the job has evaded modern archaeology to this point, it is clearly another piece of evidence which takes us one step closer to unraveling the true history of our planet. When someone mentions the word Jurassic, Visualizations of enormous creatures surrounded by man-eating plants will soon follow. And this is for good reason, because during the era of the dinosaurs, enormous creatures could only survive with equally enormous food sources. Within the Black Hills of Dakota, petrified remains of these once enormous organisms can still be found. Presumably, they can also be discovered in many other parts of the world, yet within the Black Hills, it seems the prehistoric remains have avoided the deluge of sediment, which has been experienced elsewhere, subsequently burying the evidence under several meters of earth. Petrified, enormous trees that, when alive, would have soared into the air, matching in height many of today's modern skyscrapers. Open to the public in 1929, an entire island, 50 by 100 miles in size, covered with the perfectly preserved petrified remains of a once gigantic forest. Trees of incredible and seemingly impossible sizes, destroyed by a cataclysm which made them collapse in unison. Now recognized as one of the largest outcroppings of fossilized petrified wood anywhere on the surface of the Earth, it is a rare natural insight into the enormity of Earth's ancient wildlife. Quote, here is just the beginning of an astounding photographic documentation of this petrified island, a little glimpse of an entirely unknown condition upon the Earth. It is a major historical discovery that, if embraced, will cause major upheaval within the science and religious communities," said Joseph C. Bennett from BeholdGiants.com. Scientists assume that the maximum height of a tree was 425 feet from the ground, at this height, the tree's ability to pump nutrients is supposedly overcome by gravity. However, Joseph, along with several other astute researchers, have discovered the remnants of ancient trees within the area, which would have had a circumference of over a half a mile. The Devil's Tower, coincidentally also within Dakota, has been argued for many years by many people to actually be that of a once enormous petrified tree. The formation of its rocky surface does indeed appear to be reminiscent of tree bark, yet many will argue against such a premise, or indeed the possibility, based on traditional rather than more modern and controversial understandings of the past capabilities of plant and animal life. Thankfully, as more research is undertaken and more become aware of these amazing places, 
the possibility becomes even more likely. An announcement that seemingly slipped us by was made recently within Egypt. This announcement pertaining to an amazing discovery made within an area of the Giza Plateau that for a number of decades has been conveniently shut off from the public. Although the location is claimed to be a military training base, archaeologists have apparently been secretly beavering away within this remote slice of antiquity. Announced by the Supreme Council of Egyptian Antiquities, Egyptian authorities have apparently found the mysterious traces of the legendary Fourth Lost Pyramid of the Plateau. This provocative announcement stirred up a gale of protest among many Egyptologists, and the reason for this may be because the discovery might turn out to be highly controversial. Although the pyramid is in a very bad state, and this may be due to its immense age, with only a few rows of blocks remain, and these surviving blocks clearly displaying evidence to indicate that the missing blocks have simply eroded away over the eons. This ruin may not be the most important find in the area, or indeed, the purpose for the video. Along with these pyramidal remains at the site is another amazing anomaly. In the middle of this mysterious desert, an enormous staircase has been found, plunging into the desert floor. Seemingly excavated before this announcement and left for those who were fortunate enough to get access to the area to rediscover and photograph. This enormous staircase plunges straight through a limestone basin many meters in depth. This surgical slice has revealed an astonishing implication. It has revealed that the Giza Plateau does indeed extend this far. Not only that, but it demonstrates the sheer, unimaginable cubic size of this area of stone. A block of stone that was apparently man-made. Where this staircase actually leads to is as yet unknown, although it is thought to drop far below that which is currently visible, and preliminary scans of the area are suggesting that it plunges through the plateau, deep into an ocean of groundwater below. By examining the pictures of the discovery, it appears that the site has indeed been excavated from the sand, having most likely been submerged from view beforehand. The question is, who did these excavations? Who built this unbelievable structure, or indeed, the mind-bogglingly enormous Giza Plateau? Who built the pyramids and sphinx upon it? Where did such an enormous stone plateau come from? How did they shape and carve such mysterious structures with such blocks? Or perhaps, most importantly of all, where does this staircase lead? Did whoever undertake this excavation task manage to discover where it led? More research and exploration will undoubtedly be undertaken over the next few years. We will, of course, keep you posted. We recently covered the astonishing and largely unexplained ancient temple known as Kailash, which quietly sits within India. A temple cut out from a solid rock with such precision, such vision and accuracy, it is a feat we would struggle to recreate even to this day, clearly demonstrating an ancient high technology that has undoubtedly been lost over the millennia. Could this temple actually be evidence left by a far older group of people? A remnant left by a far more advanced civilization than that which academia will allow us to publicly discuss within many modern fields of study. Within the Barabha and Nagarjuni hills of the Jehanabad district of India sits another series of rock-cut features. Six crudely cut caves carved into large stones which litter the surrounding hillsides they could be seen as crude and possibly more modern attempts to recreate what can be found on the top of the hill. Known as the Lomas Rishi Cave, cut into an enormous rock, it is the only one out of the many within the area which demonstrates a level of refinement which literally boggles the mind. The only cave in the area that has a delicately cut entrance, but also an interior which has seemingly been protected from the elements perfectly preserved in its original state. 
demonstrating a state of rock cutting which has left the rock polished to a mirror-smooth finish, evidence reinforcing the postulation that this cave and additionally Kailash Temple are remnants left by a far older and once far more advanced culture than officially accepted. The hut-style facade at the entrance to the cave is officially accepted as the earliest example of the ogi-shaped Chaicha Arch or Chandra Shala that was to be an important feature of Indian rock-cut architecture and sculptural decoration for centuries during its post-cataclysmic development. The example here is largely accepted as the specific influence for later examples, of which there are many at later Buddhist sites, such as Ajanta Caves and Kala Caves in Maharashtra. How, or indeed who, cut the Lomas Rishi Cave? How did they achieve such an amazing finish to the stonework? Were these same people responsible for the construction of the Kailash Temple? Also, another structure exquisitely cut out of a giant solid stone. Although modern academically accepted views state that they were created during the reign of the Mauryan Emperor Ashoki, a Buddhist ruler from the 3rd century BC who ruled over almost the entire country of India, caves known as Sat Gava were carved into the hills for the use of the monks, Lomas Rishi Cave being said to have been one of them. Yet due to its exquisite quality, it's hard to see just how they can claim this.